In this video, I want to very quickly talk to you about another type of distribution that you can create using Amazon CloudFront that allows you to connect to resources in the private subnets of your VPC. No longer do you need to necessarily have a load balancer sitting in the public subnet or worse, web servers sitting in the public subnet and exposed out onto the internet. Instead, you can use something called VPC Origins to allow you to use CloudFront to distribute incoming traffic to resources load balancers and EC2 instances in private subnets of your VPC. Let's take a look at how that works in this video. Okay, so let's talk about CloudFront and VPC Origins. So VPC Origins allow you to distribute content from applications hosted in a VPC private subnet. It allows you to restrict access solely through CloudFront distributions, so you do not need to expose backend services hosted in a VPC with public IP addresses, and they do not need to sit in the public subnet. You can prevent end users from discovering or bypassing the CloudFront service to access web applications directly, and this reduces the attack service and enhances overall security posture. And so here we have a quick diagram of a VPC with just a private subnet. Within the private subnet, we have an application load balancer that sends traffic to two or more EC2 instances, goal configured with a target group. Now, you would also need to have an internet gateway, obviously, for your VPC but the application load balancer is being deployed internally in the private subnets rather than the standard public subnet configuration. Furthermore, you would then configure your CloudFront distribution with a VPC origins configuration that allows your users to access the application load balancer that's now sitting in the private subnet of your VPC via that CloudFront distribution. Previously, without a VPC origins, you would have to bring this application load balancer into the public subnet, creating a security risk that you must take and obviously take necessary actions to mitigate as much of that risk as possible. Okay, let's jump into the AWS Management Console and I wanna quickly demo how you would set this up. Okay, so here we are on my AWS Management Console. This is a development account and I am in the North Virginia region. So I've already pre-created an environment so that I can do this demo relatively quickly. Um, and essentially it's the same sort of thing, right? I've created a VPC with subnets. So let me just quickly show you the VPC. It's called the IAAS VPC Origins Demo. Within this VPC, I have got four subnets. So two private and two public. And then I've also got an internet gateway. You do need to have an internet gateway in your VPC. I've also got a NAT gateway because I've deployed a web server and I've downloaded a couple of files from the internet um, to set up the Apache web services and all that wonderful stuff. And then I've got security groups. Now with the security groups, it's really simple, right? The traffic comes in and hits the load balancer. And then from the load balancer, it goes to the service that are associated with the web security group. There is one particular inbound role you need to configure with the application load balancer. And that is as well as allowing inbound traffic on port 80 from the internet. Well, you don't really need that, but I needed to also ensure that I add a rule from the CloudFront global origins group. Okay, so this is a predefined list of IP ranges that will ensure that the load balancer accepts traffic from CloudFront. So you need to enable that. Let me just quickly show you how to do that. All you need to do is do um, inbound rules. You obviously add a rule, so whatever that rule might be, um, HTTPS, for instance. And then when you scroll all the way down, there's a prefix list available to you. And from there, you want to basically select the CloudFront prefix list, which is just there, okay? So that's what I did. And you need to put that in place, obviously, for this to work. Okay, so that's the VPC done. In the EC2 section, what I've also done is I've deployed two EC2 instances. So let's just go that. So those are my two EC2 instances. They're sitting behind a load balancer. This is an internal load balancer, okay? So it doesn't have a public IP address. It's not accessible from the internet. And obviously there's a target group that manages the targets and you can see both of my servers are healthy. Great. So the next step that we need to do is we need to go into CloudFront. Okay, and I'll open that up in another tab. And here we're going to go and click on VPC Origins. We'll be creating a VPC Origin. I'll call this one the IAS VPC 
BBC origins. Okay, something like that. And then your origin ARN needs to be the application load balancer for that particular application. Okay, so that's the IAS ALB there. For the purposes of this lab, I'm just using HTTP only, and I'll go ahead and click Create VPC Origin. This takes about 15 minutes to complete because it does a whole lot of things in the background. It creates some network interface cards for your VPC. It creates some security group settings and various other background processing and configurations. So I'll pause the video over here and come back once it's all done. Okay, so as you can see, my IAS VPC Origins has now been deployed and it's obviously pointing to that Origin ARN, which is my load balancer using the HTTP only protocol. So next, what we need to do is create a distribution. So we're going to click create a distribution. I'm going to give the distribution a name. So I'm going to call this one the IAS website VPC Origins, just so I know what it is and it's a single website or app, and then you go ahead and click Next. And then this is where you're gonna select the origin type. So we're gonna select the VPC origin type, and so we need to provide the Azure VPC origin. So we'll click Browse VPC origins, and there's only one that we just created moments ago. Go ahead and choose that one. Okay, leave everything else as it is, and come down to the bottom and click Next. And we're not going to enable any WAF security for the moment. Click Next again, and then click Create Distribution. Okay, so now the distribution is getting deployed. This too will take a few minutes. I'm going to pause the video over here, come back once it's all done. Okay, so as you can see, our CloudFront distribution has been deployed as well. So that's all looking good. And so if we now grab the distribution domain name and go into a browser tab and paste that in there. There you are our website loads up perfectly well. So at this point in time, the way how we're connecting to this website is using VPC Origins and CloudFront distribution, but we don't have those resources, the load balancer and the EC2 instances exposed out onto the internet in any form, okay? And this means that you can now connect to resources deployed in private subnets without having to deploy any sort of intermediary service like a load balancer or whatever it might be in the public subnet, increasing your security posture. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you found this tutorial helpful and you're preparing for the AWS Solutions Architect Associate exam, check out my full course in the description and pinned comment below. It includes three real-world capstone projects to help you build hands-on skills employers are looking for. I'll see you folks in the next video.